Welcome to the STARS program, seniors taking active roles in society. And now, here's your host, Anita Finley. If someone said to you, what are the absolute worst foods for digestion, you'd say, oh, probably candy and, and all sorts of things that we all know, you know, bad things, right? Coke and all that. But no, we've got a nutritional educator, Dr. Julie Gatza, uh, Gatza and she is calling in from the west coast of Florida. So thank you, uh, Dr. Julie, for uh, can, being here on our show. But you certainly have that title will get somebody crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, everyone likes me until they hear what my advice is. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to listen very carefully. We're going to see what your picks are for the absolute <clears throat> worst foods for digestion. All right. So one of the first things that I, I may be first on that list or not, but one of the things that no one likes me after I tell them this is uh, coffee, tea, and carbonation. Changes how you absorb at such a tremendously dramatic level that I've had a hard time or near impossible getting somebody stable as a doctor until they actually got off the coffee, tea, and carbonation. It changes how you alkalize, how the digestive system actually absorbs, and uh, it doesn't matter whether it's decaf or not. Those things get in the way of anyone getting truly healthy. Well, I don't drink coffee. I sometimes drink tea, but I don't need it, and I never drink carbonated drink. So I'm good for the first one. You are, and you're actually quite unusual because pretty much everyone does do one of those things. I would, you know, I'm always a doctor who's of moderation, which is, you know, enjoy things. But, you know, if you're going to have it, have it a couple of times a week, not a couple of times a day. Okay. And the interesting thing is that when I go out now, I ask her a cup of hot water and they look at me. You want lemon? You want, No, no, just hot water, please. You know, uh, I found right. that out interesting from a professor once who was in theater. And she always just had hot water. And that was years ago. And I've been trying to do that. Oh, it's such a good idea. And, you know, it does satisfy things. We're just so used to having so much flavor and fats and all sorts of things in our mouth that you forget the simplicity. And when you go on a really strict diet of, you know, very clean foods, you start to realize how good food is after, a, you know, a four or five days of being perfect on it. Now, before you continue with this, how did you discover this, that these were the worst foods? Uh, only from experience. I've been doctoring for 29 years. My husband and I started uh, him 30 years ago, and uh, we are chiropractors, which you think necks and backs only. Well, we were really good at correcting the necks and backs, but we started to see that when you would uh, really address somebody's digestive system, where you got them to um, create their own enzymes to break down their own food, take away things that were actually irritating to digestion and absorption, what we found was we were really correcting many things that you would never think to go see a chiropractor for. Sugars were coming down for diabetics. Asthma was being eliminated for the asthmatics. You know, autoimmune disorders were completely handled. And it was simply all we did was get the body more efficient. One of the major things that's overlooked is we aren't making enough digestive enzymes. We don't have solid food on this uh, in this country that's lots of minerals. We round up everything. We... You know, chemicalize it. Our seeds are different. So we're getting less and less uh, ability to get nutrition from our food. So I always have patients taking uh, digestive enzymes. The one I use is called Absorbaid, but it breaks down all the different types of foods on their plate. So if they don't want to listen to my, you know, top 10 worst foods, then take the enzymes because it gives you the ability to get more bang for your buck every time you eat. Well, Looking at your list, I'm worried I wouldn't know what else to eat now. <laughs> Is there anything left for me to eat? <laughs> There's so much. You know, if you think about it this way, that we could go through all the points on this list, but what everyone should be eating is tons of water. First thing in the morning, have a couple of glasses, warm or, or you know, lukewarm or cold. I don't even care. Um, lots of protein and tons of steamed green vegetables. If you do that... You're going to win the game. If you have no energy, you'll improve, especially if you have these enzymes to break down those good foods. If you're overweight, you'll lose weight. If you can't sleep, you'll sleep better. And there are so many delicious recipes that you can make with protein and vegetables. It's amazing. Throw a little rice in there if you need the carbs and uh, drink water. And within four or five days, you're going to go, whoa, this is a little difficult. But you start to see a change in just how you feel overall. Hmm. Okay, well, let's start. Just give it to us. Let's do what else. Now, you just said about the carbonated 
But go ahead with some of the, and coffee and tea and but talk about some of the things that I can't even believe and I'm going to let you do it. I mean, dairy products are a tough one. Dairy is a is a changed animal at this point where, you know, we had kids we were the, one of the last people on the block as kids that had the milkman delivering milk. And that milk only lasted 3 days. So that meant that it was live food. It could actually possibly be better digested, even though we don't have the lactase enzyme to break it down. You could get something from that milk. Now you can buy milk, and it sits in the fridge for three weeks before it goes bad. There's something wrong with that. Milk, normal milk, should only last three days. So now we're giving this to our kids in their cereal and in their bottles, and we're drinking it ourselves. And I mean, it's just, it's going to irritate you because it's basically dead food at this point. So it takes more nutrition to break down the dead food than it actually would ever give you calcium and protein from the actual dairy that they make these days. So um, if, you're, if you're buying milk, should you buy the, lact, the lactate milk? Lact no, because that's altered at this point. Oh. Pretty much avoid the milk. There's lots of other solutions. There's the almonds and the coconut and the soy and oat milk and you know, there's lots of other ways you can get around to putting milk in something or, or utilizing it. So, you know, it's just it's a food that's kind of dead on our planet now. And, you know, the calves are the only ones that are really benefiting from milk because we've altered it so much that it, it shouldn't we shouldn't be drinking it. Hmm. So um, one of the other ones is um, grains. In general, wheat is the worst. And, uh, you know, the seeds are different. The soil isn't being remineralized. We use a lot of Roundup, the chemical, the weed killer, on this. And, you know, when we were first in practice, no one knew what the word gluten was. And we had to go to the library to go find all the lists of foods that gluten was in or wheat was in. And, you know, now it's an extremely common household word. And I'm seeing it get worse and worse. And more and more grains are getting pulled into this into this reaction because we've altered our grains so horribly that, you know, a pizza and pasta and sandwiches and bagels and crackers, all of those things are basically just a, a chemical little pill rather than something you're getting nutrition from. My goodness, this is so you're saying that when people buy gluten free food, is that good? Well, I mean, it's probably better for certain, but you know, that gluten free food is now things like, um, barley and millet well if there the demand for barley and millet starts to go up which it has they're still using these chemicals on those as well mm. so grains in general are not the healthiest of foods especially in this country i definitely have reacted to wheat for many years and i went to italy for three weeks and i had absolutely no reaction to any of the pizzas and the pastas that i ate which was very surprising and I had heard that, but I really got to see that I felt amazing, and they don't change their grains yet. Now, that's interesting you should say that, because I eat a lot of barley, and I guess that's mm -hmm. good. I eat a lot it, of oatmeal, is. but what, is oatmeal wheat? No, oatmeals are, oatmeals o oats. Oatmeals oats, and it's, it's definitely a better um, grain for you. However, the proper way to have oats, which is all lost because our grandparents aren't, you know, necessarily giving us the way to make foods anymore. No one's listening and everyone's in a hurry, is uh, oats should be steel-cut whole oats um, and then soaked overnight. And the reason being is it releases enzymes and we're not, one, producing enough of these enzymes. So you want to get more benefit from having a grain like that or any grain and any food. So... You know, that will do that. If you're not going to soak your food or your oats and things like that, then, you know, take one of these absorbids every meal because it has the ability to break down the grains, the fats in your diet, the proteins in your diet. And, you know, the most popular nutrients I've ever given to all my patients, hands down, has been a high-quality digestive enzyme so that they could put things on their plates and actually get nutrition from it when they took the enzymes. Mm. Interesting. I've not really been familiar with enzymes. It's what you're saying is I will. I've just ran out of oatmeal. I'm going to go buy the steel oats now for my mm -hmm. next one. I will do it. I'll soak it overnight. I appreciate that. But the one that's disturbing me is about nuts. I am. I yeah. thought nuts are so healthy. I eat all the nuts without, you know, organic nuts. No, nothing on it all original. But you're telling me it's still not good. Well, nuts are amazing in the nutrients that they have in them and the protein content and the ability to supplement our diet. But 
We're eating the planter's nuts, the honey roasted, the toasted. All these nuts don't really have the ability to be broken down. If you want to eat cashews whole and raw I and do. soak them overnight, oh, soak when them. you oh. soak them, it <laughs> once again releases the enzymes that the cashews have so that you actually get more nutrition from a cashew than you ever would if you didn't soak it overnight. Same thing with almonds. You know how almonds get stuck in your teeth and they're yeah. a little chewy? And yes. If you soak them, they're snappy, they're, they plump up, you don't need as much. You can pull the skin off if you want, and you have like this power pack of enzyme, nutrients, and, and protein that actually is good for your body. Hmm. So nuts, you know, in olden days should be soaked. Well, bodies haven't changed, but the way that we prepare our food has changed, and now we're wondering why everyone's sick. And I was looking at your citrus fruits. I have one fresh orange I squeeze every morning. You're saying that's not, I shouldn't do that. Nope, that's perfect. It's just people will sit down and eat, you know, the six little cutie tangerines all at once, and then they'll, you know, feed their cells, um, you know, uh, uh, orange juice that, you know, was squoze in weeks ago, then squeezed weeks ago, put in the fridge, put in a carton, and then you put it in your glass. There isn't any vitamin C left, zero. <laughs> it is purely just sugar from a fruit, and then, you know, they can get it out a too acidic system that means the body will change it and not absorb. So if you eat a fresh piece of um, uh, citrus a day, totally fine. Okay, now I don't see on this list avocados because I eat a lot of avocados and I heard they were very good for you. They're perfect and it's a great food and it has all sorts of good fats. You know, we've sort of gotten it back into good fats, which is proper because fats are the basis of hormones. And if you aren't breaking down fat, so if somebody says, oh, I avoid greasy foods, I avoid this, I can't eat fatty foods, what it means is they're not making the ability to break down their fats. When you take an enzyme to aid this, now that avocado is broken down fully and you get all the fats from the avocado into your bloodstream so that you can repair your tissues, you can um, lose weight properly, you can get rid of pain and inflammation, you can make hormones. Fats are absolutely vital for all those processes that I just talked about, but you have to be able to break them down. Lots of people eat good food, but they're not um, able to process it and break it down into small enough pieces to get it into the bloodstream and, and feed the body. I have to ask you one more question. I think I'm going to have you on again. You're so, you're so smart and so good, and you're telling us such new things. I do eat one soft-boiled egg a day, and I, I, my mother lived to be 94, and she always did that. She had oatmeal and one egg. Now, I hear so many different stories about eggs. What do you think? I think eggs are um, one of the most amazing foods on the planet. However, I do say this. Do try to get your eggs locally. Right. Try to get them pasture-raised. Right. And um, that means those chickens got to roam around all day and organic. And that means you're getting something that if you haven't tasted a pasture-raised organic um, egg, it is orange. That's it right. Stands up high. Right. It the yolk is like orange. Somebody, it's amazing, isn't it? It is, and it tastes like somebody has injected a stick of butter into the actual yolk. It is such a different taste. I think hard boiled eggs are the most brilliant food because you can hard boiled eggs and um, put them in your purse, put them in a bag, throw them <laughs> in the bottom of your bag. If it cracks, who cares? And it's such a good food. You'd be amazed if you ate a hard-boiled egg rather than grabbing that second cup of coffee or right. having that donut or right. chocolate in your drawer. You actually feel satisfied, and you'll lose the weight and feel much more energetic because you're eating a good food, not just a food. Well, Dr. Julie Gatza, who is the co-founder of the Florida Wellness uh, Institute over there in the west coast of Florida, she's terrific. I'm going to give you a way that you can uh, get in touch with her. This is uh, super. I'm so happy that we were able to get her. Uh, you can go to her website, which is naturesources.com naturesources.com you've been terrific i just love the fact you were on our show and i'm sure i'll be calling you again oh thank you so much and if anyone's interested in pursuing um getting those quality enzymes they can uh, uh check out what the absorbate is on the nature's sources or they can call the 1-800 number and if they use the code radio they can get free samples or 20 percent off and that um, number is 1-800-827 7656 and it behooves you if you're going to spend money on nutrition 
let's get the nutrition from your plate into your body. And that's why these um, perfect enzymes work so well. So it's called Absorbate. And thanks for having me on your show. Oh, wonderful. I hope I can get to talk to you again. Thank you so much, Dr. Julie. Thank you. All right, bye.